Guys, we are really at a point which is super exciting because we can start reusing some of the things we have been doing. And in the previous video in this series, Masterclass Teaching on Configuring Reactor, we made a behavior for this button, A6, that we can reuse. Because what we did was in the feedback, we were referring to the IO reference of the behavior, which is the one defined up here. And we also set up conditional feedback with reference to that. We have our event handler set up. So presses on the left and on the right side of the button and on the lower edge of the button are all referring to the behavior IO reference, which is the parameter configured in the top. So the whole idea of that is that it allows us to easily reuse all these configuration codes that we have made here. So that's what we'll do. And it's easy. It's called the master behavior. I don't know if you have worked with programs like uh, Adobe InDesign, for instance. There you have master pages. So the idea of that is that you have like a template, a layout of a, a page or spread that you really like and you would like to uh, have the same color in the background logo and position of lines and page numbers and so on, located all kinds of places. Hey, that concept is the same for PowerPoint, for Word documents and everything. PowerPoints, they definitely have master pages, right? So it's the same here. We have the ability to have master behaviors and we can override on top of those. Now, the behavior that we have done here, it, it would be like having a slide in PowerPoint and then wanting to convert that into a master page that we can use on other pages. So basically what we have right here is the, uh, or what we'll do is to click on the layer training config and then we'll create a master behavior for this. And let's call that navigation. And then we can copy it from an, a behavior on this layer. So we'll just do that, create. And now you see this little purple guy here called navigation also pops up over here. If we click this one and if we open up show more, hey, we are seeing actually all the things that we have just made for A6 over here, that specific behavior. And what I want to show you now is that if we click on this button here, let's just get out of simulation mode so that we can actually create an action for it then notice that on, on the training config layer, if I press create to create a behavior for this button, and I search down here, you find that there's a master behavior now called navigation. I'll just select this one. And you see something pretty similar to this guy over here has actually just happened. So let's just press it. And you see that hmm, it does exactly the same. Why is that? Well, maybe because we just made a copy of A6, but that copy was copied down into master behavior. And all we did on this guy was essentially just to pick that as the behavior. If we open up here, you'll find, sorry, I just need to click the right one and then get out of this mode. So we click A5. And if you're looking into this, you can see for navigation feedback, for instance, there's actually not these values, but they are like dim. They are uh, grayed out. And that's because they are inherited from the master behavior down here, this one, the navigation one. This is where it's actually are located, but on our A5 behavior, we're inheriting these values. What it means is that for default feedback, for instance, we could change the color to purple. So what we now do is that we inherit everything except we are overriding the color purple in our default feedback. And that's the power of master behaviors that we can do these kind of things. Actually, one thing that I would like to do is to change the parameter. And I would say that in many cases, we should not add a parameter to a master behavior. That's actually the kind of thing that you would take out of it. So why don't we go to the master behavior and basically say, let's just let's just clear out the parameter here. Uh, I am not 100% sure how to do that inside of this one. It seems like it always won the parameter, but at least I could remove the value in the field, save this and Okay, something changed because in my master behavior, I removed the parameter, the IO reference. So what I will now do, don't worry, don't freak out. I'll just go here. You see, we are still inheriting from the navigation master behavior. And of course, my job is to pick the IO reference up here. And it will now suggest to use step change. This is where you would resist the uh, temptation of, of choosing the default and just go with navigation because we have made our, our own master behavior and we know it works with this one. So we still have it. It's still working. Let's just test it. You see, yeah. By the way, these are obviously synchronous uh, because they are both manipulating the same variable. 
Now, this one over here should actually also be changed over. And there's different ways you could do it. Well, if, if we go in here, we could now actually choose the behavior, choose navigation. But doing so would be like putting all the things that are already in this one because we copied it and you just put them in underneath and then you are applying the same values on top of what you could have inherited. You can see it if I remove this one, you can see we are actually inheriting that value now from the master behavior navigation. So I could go through all the places and remove these things. But honestly, guys, it's probably better to just say, hey, delete behaviors, just confirm. Then we go back here and click this, say, let's create a new one. Let's just pick navigation. Let's add the variable as my parameter. And we are back in business. No, I don't want to use that because I have my own plans. OK, so that's in place now. <clears throat> this is a little bit of a deviation from the training PDF file that is underpinning this series. And that is I will now create a second variable that I want to uh, imagine that it would be changing between like channels or something. So uh, and I want to apply that to, to one of these buttons. I think it's going to be useful in a moment. So let's just set this one up. I will really refer to your imagination on what this means. Or so let's see channel one. No, let's just make like an abbreviation like that. You could also just choose like one, two, if you wanted to, three. But to make clear that these are not necessarily integers, they are strings. We could do this, give them names. That's nice. And there we go. All right. So now we have this. Um, just add an option. So we have four. That's somehow nicer. Just to make it different from the first variable. So we have now four options on this one. And on the VMAX variable, we had three options. OK, three, four options. And now on this guy, We'll just go up here, edit, change this to the channel var variable instead. And no, I don't want to use step change. I want to use that. Let's try the simulation mode. I press this one. You see I'm cycling through my, my, my uh, four new values for channel. Over here, I'm cycling through the three. And uh, notice that since I'm inheriting, I can go up on the sides, go down on the sides. That's what we define for the master behavior down here, that we have event handlers for the left press and for the right edge press and also cycle on the bottom edge of this master behavior. Before I wrap up the video, let's just pick a different color for it. And that's a really neat thing about the master behavior where we are now inheriting it on these two buttons. But why not? Let's just turn off simulation mode, click this guy and say, yeah, because it's a different thing we're doing, we'll just pick a different color for this one. And it's inheriting everything else. So that's just such a beautiful thing about master behaviors. I hope you can see the power of this. And I also just want to mention that all those master behaviors you see that we have defined, Skahoy, are there to help you, to make it easy to take any parameter and just slap it onto a button, knob, encoder, fader, joystick, whatever, and then they have functionality already. I somehow can't really see why. Why? Yeah, okay, let, let, let's just try playing a little bit. I'm sorry, but it's. Um, I'm just quickly going to pick this one, create a behavior for it, and then pick the. Um, let's just pick one of the variables here again. So this is bonus. This is bonus, guys. We'll just pick this one and notice this picks up step change. Step change is kind of what we have done already over here. So as I'm, uh, let's go to simulation, we click this one, you see it's cycling the value of channel, you can click the sides and it's doing the same thing. I believe that if we go here and we press and hold the top side, uh, no, okay, it doesn't. We don't, we have not it. And no, it's actually not part of step change. But what I wanted to show you is that if we took this up to one of the encoders up here instead, okay, so let's just pick uh, B. Um, no, wait, C. That's easier for us to see. Uh, currently, it's just using this dummy behavior. But just, let's just empty that out and then select our variable channel like that. And notice that step change is also chosen here. So if, if I go here, um, if I pick this one or if I pick my A4, it's, it's the same thing we're doing. We're working with the variable channel and we are using step change but step change also has function up here you see as i'm rotating the encoder does the same 
So this is what is called trigger conversion. It is so if you look inside how step change is designed, you find that there, there is actually support for any type of input. You can have a fader and it will go through the range of the values. You can have a joystick and it will also change the values as you move it to the side. You can have an encoder and it will know what to do with the value and a button, it will know what to do with the value. So of course the interaction designs are different, but our master behaviors are to a pretty large extent designed to allow triggers from any type of input component and make something useful out of it. So that's just uh, one thing that I wanted to share with you, but I won't show you the details of master behaviors in this video. That's a little bit too deep, but we'll probably come back to that another day.